Welcome back, anatomy students, to the 2017-2018 school year. I'm Miss Snook. Um, those of you who have had me before know I talk pretty fast in class. Um, sometimes it's hard to catch everything I say, so having these videos to watch after lecture can be very useful. Um, it's also useful, obviously, if you're absent. You can get online and hopefully get the lesson anyways. This isn't your first rodeo. You know the kind of materials you need to be successful in class. I'm going to point out a few that might be unique to my class. The three inch binder, yes, we will use a large binder. I give you tons of resources. We practice, 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 and we accumulate like crazy. So you will fill that three inch binder. Every year students think they're not going to, and every year they do. Um, spiral notebook, I want you to have a spiral notebook so that you can keep all your notes in one place together. Loose leaf, they go all over the place. So this is going to be a lot easier to stay organized and study and we're going to use it as our hall pass and a couple other things. Flashcards, this is very flashcardable information, anatomy is, it's another language. So just like memorizing ola means hi, you're going to memorize the gastrocnemius means calf and so that is something you can study very easily on a flashcard. We're going to color like crazy. Um, we will color code to learn body parts. So you're going to color the humerus blue, the word, and then you're going to go find the humerus and you're going to color that blue. And that allows you to quickly identify uh, things while you're studying. Okay, some more general rules, continuing on with the handbook. Um, first of all, if you respect yourself, respect others, respect me and the others, and you respect your school and the materials, you're going to be a good kid and you probably are not going to come into any problems with anything. Um, going under that respect piece, phones. Phones are not allowed in this class except for class activities. So that would be respecting me, right? You're not texting while I'm talking. You're not taking a call while I'm talking, which that usually doesn't happen. But um, here's a heads up to the parents. Please don't text your kids during class time. A lot of parents tell me, oh, I figured they would just wait until passing time to check it. I'm sure you know your children better. They are impulsive and they will check it as soon as it comes in. So you would help all of the teachers out if you waited and texted maybe during lunchtime. So anyways, phones are used only for class um, activities like you might use it to videotape a lab or to time a lab or to take pictures of a lab or another activity, Quizlets, Cahoots. We do a lot of things that are useful, the calendar, um, but not texting and not while I'm talking. Um, I have two different classes, anatomy and AP, so there's labs out at any given time and I need each group to be hands off on the other group. When we're in the lab where there's no eating, there's no horseplay, um, I work with streptococcus in here, you know, strep throat, I, I work with that. And, um, and we, we also work with um, hydrochloric acid, like that's not going to mix well with your donut in the morning. So no eating during labs. Your attendance, um, I hope you know right now that you have 12 absences and you're going to lose credit for the class. So you don't want to accumulate 12 absences. Tardies, I don't know if you know this or not, but they actually count towards your total total absences. So you don't want to accumulate tardies or absences. I'm going to have a hall pass and you can use this hall pass um, up to four times a quarter. And one of the hall passes you might use might be as a tardy. So if a teacher holds you after, which I do all the time with AP, sorry, um, if a teacher holds you after they'll give you a pass and then you can be late to class. But if it's not that. You're just hanging out at four corners. The bell rang. You come running for my class and I shut the door. Sorry. You're going to need a hall pass. And that is not an excuse tardy. So you could use one of these hall passes and it won't accumulate here and it won't accumulate here. So that's, a, that's something you might want to do. Uh, when you come into class, there is going to be some sort of bell work when you come into class. Um, it might be a question to get you thinking. It might be a review of yesterday's material. It might be I want you to read something short and quick to um, start thinking about what we're going to do today. So during the first 10 minutes, I'm taking attendance. I'm answering questions about homework from the night before maybe. Um, I'm answering 
questions about people who are absent. I need you to be productive while I'm being productive. So you want to do that bow work as well as maybe write down some important information like we have a test on the 13th. Um, tonight we have an online quiz to take. So you want to you want to write those things down maybe in your planner or if you're using your phone for that purpose. Um, the homework is always due the next day. I'm going to try to give you enough time to complete homework in class. So do the best you can. Um, if anything, you're going to go home with like 15 minutes worth of homework to do. Class work that we do in class, we're going to score like correct it in class right now. You'll get immediate feedback. We're not going to score those. That's going to be part of your participation in class. Um, but homework that has to go home in order to finish it, you're going to get 10, 8, or 5 points. So 100%. If you did it. So I'm simply trying to encourage you to do your work and, and give it a good shot. Um, if you have at least 75% of it done, I'm going to give you an 80%. That's better than 75. Um, so, so do the best you can with that. If you have less than 75%, that homework is not done. You still need to do it and you can turn it in up until the scheduled test date. And you're only going to get 50%, but at least you're getting points, right? So you want to do that. If you were to bring in some approved materials like Clorox wipes, um, other things that we use in class. If we were using glue sticks a lot, I'll ask for that. If we were using markers, colored pencils, I'll ask for those things. Um, so, so ask me what you could bring and, and I'll give you a hint of what I might need. And you can earn up to two late passes for um, the term. And if you don't use those, you can turn them in for extra credit at the end. If you're absent, you are going to write the word absent on your paper so it's not marked as a 50% or late homework assignment. And you are going to turn, I was looking at my desk, you're going to look, turn it in on my desk. There's a metal basket. So if you could put it in there with the word absent on it, um, I will take care of the rest. Um, Google Classroom really is the best place to look for your homework. You already have, at the beginning of a chapter, a calendar, which identifies what we're doing every single day. And I try my best to stay on that calendar. And since there's two of us teaching this class this year, I'm really going to be on that, that schedule so that the two groups are together. Um, but Google Classroom will have links to everything we do. The calendar that I um, showed you is in Google Classroom, and that's all hyperlinked. Um, but I'll have our day's agenda, all the things we accomplished, um, any PowerPoints, any videos, any homework, papers, anything. That's going to be in Google Classroom. So that's where you want to go. Um, also behind me over there, you can see that blue caddy behind me. I put the papers there at the end of the day. So the next day, if you weren't on Google Classroom, you could go get that hard copy behind me. Or if you lose yours, come on by and get another copy. That's fine, too. You'll have the same number of days absent uh, to make up your work. So if you were absent for three days, you get three days to make up your work. If you were not excused, then you will get no points for making up work. It'd be great if you do the work anyways, just so that you know what's going on. A lot of times parents want you to do that anyways. But if it's an unexcused absence, per our handbook, there will be no points rewarded. If you're absent for a test or quiz, um, if you're absent the day of the test or quiz, you didn't really miss anything but the quiz, right? No preparation. So you're going to be expected to take that as soon as you come back. If you are absent the day before the test, um, I'm spending that day reviewing with you. You've already completed the review by then. Um, you should have your materials at home because you were working on that review. The review will be posted at the end of the day. So if you're the responsible student that you are, you'll get online, you'll go to the Google Classroom, you'll pull up that review, and you'll check your work against mine. A lot of times I have videos like this one um, already loaded, and so you could look at that, and it'll be like you didn't miss a thing. So if you're absent the day before the test, I still expect you to take it. So you're absent Tuesday, Wednesday, I hand you a paper, and you're like, I wasn't here. This is my rule. You will take the test that day. If you're absent more than one day, then we'll get together. If you're absent Monday and Tuesday and I'm testing Wednesday, well, I'm not going to make you take the test that day. So if it's more than one day, we'll reschedule. We're trying really hard to get your homework done in class. Um, 
and we all work at different speeds. So some of you are going to get done really quick, and quite often you want to go and socialize with other people. And, and that is kind of not a good thing because other people are going to follow you. And then they might not be done, and so they're going to want to go and socialize or do whatever it is that you're doing. So what I need you to do is be a role model. I need you to be the good example setter and be productive. Do something else. Read a book. Study for the upcoming quiz or test. Make flashcards. You can do homework for another class. That's fine, but I want you to use your class time for productivity. I've already talked about the hall passes. You'll get four for each quarter. Um, you can use them to go to your locker if you forgot something. You can use them to go to the bathroom during warm-up time or during independent work time. Or, like I said, if you were late and it's because of your own tardiness, um, you could use it for that. But please do this during independent time, not when I'm lecturing. And if I'm in the middle of a conversation or like to the class, I'm giving some sort of instruction. Please don't raise your hand because I feel like I need to call on you right this very second as soon as I see your hand. And when I'm in the middle of explaining something and then I stop to hear you ask to go to the bathroom. Oh my gosh, I almost lose my mind. And I forget what I'm saying. So please just wait until my thought has finished before raising your hand that's kind of like interrupting. Um, you don't realize it, but it's interrupting my thought. So, so just to help me out, if you could wait. And um, at the end of the hour, I'll dismiss you. I need a moment to close to remind you, don't forget about the online quiz. Um, don't forget to bring colored pencils tomorrow. I want to make sure that your area is cleaned up because after five hours, that's a lot of cleanup for me. So I want to make sure um, your papers are put away or you didn't leave markers on the floor. Um, here's how you're scored. 50% of your grade is assessments. So that's the biggest chunk. Um, it might be a test, a quiz. We'll do some quizzes with like prefixes, suffixes. We do a lot of labeling quizzes. Those are your easy points. So really kill those assignments. Um, some projects and research we'll do too. 20% is your homework. A lot of that is going to be ungraded. It's best effort. And some of that will be graded. It'll be corrected for correctness. 25% is lab. I will collect lab. I will read it thoughtfully. You will be scored higher because it is a more application type assignment. And then 5% is work ethic and participation. Not just sitting there being a bump on a log, but actually engaging, asking questions, answering questions in a group you're not just sitting back and taking it all in, but you're, you're giving something to the group and you're participating. So I want you to earn those participation points, not just absorb points because you didn't get in trouble, okay? So we're gonna have a little bit of accountability for that and that's 5% of your grade. So that's all I have. We've already gotten on to Google Classroom and signed up. So I'm going to kick that one to the side, and I will see you tomorrow.